Sheen Umeda of the Deloro Group opened Debate 6, which sought to illuminate the topics of SDN and NFV, or Network Functions Virtualization, which, as Umeda pointed out, is a new proposition for the telcos. He first asked Bob Mandeville of Testlab Iometrics to shed light on the progress of NFV. Mandeville said that the technology was on its way to the test lab. And now, just let me say very briefly, the testing environment itself will begin in phase one, racked in a lab, and in phase two will be globally deployed, the reference architecture will be globally uh, deployed with the agreement of the very significant service provider members of CEPH contributing to this global deployment of the CEPH reference architecture. Viral Vimawala of Aspirant Communications provided more details of what needed to be done. So there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of education metrics, and then uh, th that's one crop. To going following up, the architecture guy made me speak again, and and then came up the questions like, what about the predictability? What about the reliability? Now that we're talking of inter interoperability, right? Um, I, I, there were servers which were virtualized. Now there are networks, they are being virtualized. What does it mean? Is it the same thing? Not really, because this network virtualized network functions, VNFs, are gonna be residing on this server which is virtualized, and so now your problem became twofold. And that's where the big, biggest question mark is. I did my POC with you know, this template, right? It could have been XYZ flavor of hypervisor from a, a, a virtual router from a vendor X. All right, sounds good. Tomorrow, if I decide to go with the hypervisor B, is it going to perform the same? Am I going to get the same reliability? Umeda then asked what the vendors were doing to simplify matters. I, I'll, I'll take a crack at it, right? So, so SD, SDN was hard to grasp two years ago, okay? NFV is not hard to grasp. Okay, so I, I will challenge anybody, like the example, right, like who are staring, what is NFV? Because it is a one-line explanation. You know, when you do voice video data on your carrier network, there are about 16 boxes purpose built that make that happen. We need to move most of those purpose built boxes to general purpose, what he's showing as an NFVI, Network Function Virtualization Infrastructure, meaning general purpose server storage compute. What we're hearing from, from carriers like, for example, Telefonica, uh, who presented on this recently, is they're looking at taking this as far as they can. And, and the lines between NFV and SDN sort of blur because they're saying, hey, I'm not just going to um, NFV something like a firewall or NFV an evolved packet core. I want to NFV the edge router. I want to NFV um, the BRAS and get to this place where we've got an optical connection between sites in the metro, an optical connection between cities and the core, and around that we have x86 servers or perhaps white box switches with software running in the cloud and software running on those servers uh, to deliver the most cost efficient uh, network possible that can also scale and be flexible. And, and the big driver for this really is their competitors, right? And, and these carriers view their competitors as the, the web service providers today, the Googles, the Microsofts, the Amazons. And uh, it's very analogous to something that occurred 15 years ago, the ISP world, right? Mm -hmm. Carriers didn't quite understand what is this internet thing, should we be in or out of it? And now I think carriers, when they look at cloud and they think about providing a cloud infrastructure either for themselves or for their customers and look at their web service providers, they're saying, hey, these guys are just inherently more efficient and smarter about uh, their network infrastructure. And for us to be competitive in this cloud future, we need to get there, right? So NFE is going to be a big driver for carriers to uh, basically uh, take these dedicated hardware devices that provide layer four through layer seven services and run them on a server. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, that will at least put them on a competitive footing with some of these large web service providers. Steve West of Cyan was then invited to talk about his company's position with respect to NFV. He said the move to software had profound implications. Instead of being able to go to a standard and say, we now understand what this thing is, and we have protocols that 
completely define the reference points that we use. When you move into this mashup context of saying we have all these functions, and the functions are perhaps very well understood today, but in principle, they could be anything. We, we want to actually enable a whole ecosystem that allows people to develop new functions that can then be orchestrated and tied together with other functions to enable a creative uh, and innovative uh, service market. Uh, how do we tie those functions together? And this is what we call orchestration. It's how do you actually make that happen? Now, the, the challenge here is that this is an in, intensely software problem. It's how do you deal with the definition of these functions? What are the interfaces that are used to uh, interconnect these functions on the one hand? And then what are the interfaces used to both control and manage these functions? And not only control, but also think through the resource management implications of having these functions distributed in a cloud infrastructure. And what did the other vendors think? There's a benefit to virtualization before you ever sell the first stick of equipment. The other huge part is by lowering the cost and lowering the, the complexity of deploying these, what are today large central systems, like Evolve Packet Core, like IMS, by virtualizing them onto small servers, you expand the market. So you can take uh, Evolve Packet Core and put it in an enterprise, put it in a machine-to-machine -machine area. I think this is uh, one of the biggest challenges that the whole value chain is, uh, is faced with, is that the business model uh, normally in our industry is around finding some differentiated and defensible position that you can uh, then build on and defend through incremental mm -hmm. uh, improvement on that, uh, that uh, position that you've adopted. Uh, I think that um, this transition is, is a little different because it involves opening up and being uh, open to collaboration with, with others. And I, I think that uh, when you have that um, view of, of closing things down and defending your business by being closed, this kind of transition is actually quite tough. What we have, I think, with the carriers is a situation where uh, the competition is quite severe from an ARPU share perspective mm -hmm. with the, with the over-the-top. And uh, this is a, a big motivator, not to reduce costs, which is where the CIOs were really uh, involved in the past. But now the focus is how can the carriers increase revenue? And this um, is, again, another dimension of this business model change. I, I, just, uh, I was okay. just going to add. Um, maybe one way of looking at it, uh, perhaps simplistically, um, but I think I'm following along the lines of, of, of what's been said. Um, if ultimately what we're talking about is the, the buying and selling of cloud services, we know who the buyer is, it's the enterprise. We don't know who the seller is going, going forward. Is it data centers that are the predominant sellers or will it be um, uh, service providers that are the predominant sellers? And, and, and the answer right now is they're, they're, they have to fight it out. Um, to fig and then we will see which one predominates. And, and that's going to be an extremely interesting battle uh, over the next, what, Doug, uh, how long is it going to take? If you agree with the premise. <laughs> well, I, I, might, I do agree with the premise. And I, I think uh, there are three ways of changes that, that I've seen right now. One, data centers are consolidating. Right? So in, in the enterprise side, many large enterprises uh, run tens or hundreds of small data centers. Those are being consolidated. Right? The web service providers way ahead of the market have made major decisions to build these mega data centers. Right? Service providers actually run central offices, which in effect are data centers. And many of the largest ones have made the commitment to consolidate those central offices into large data centers, right? There was clearly a lot more to say, but after a few more contributions, the debate ran out of time and was drawn to a conclusion.